G'day YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a super quick comparison between the FuryTech Lizard Pro ESC and the Dinky D-Drive Micro Sport 25 Amp ESC. The rig that we're going to be using for our back-to-back -back comparisons is the TRX4M Bronco. It's running the stock 2S battery and a Holmes Hobbies Revolver 280 2800 kV uh, 14 pole outrunner. So we can plug the stock TRX4M battery into each speed controller. We've got Fury Tech's TRX4M battery adapter. I'll leave a link to all of this stuff in the description down below. Fury Tech has established itself as somewhat of a benchmark in the micro crawler brushless scene. But if you've been involved in rock crawling in the last three years, you've probably heard about AM32 rock crawler firmware. A lot of the 110 scale guys are running brushless outrunners with drone ESCs that have been flashed for the AM32 firmware. And this Dinky D Drive Micro Sport 25 amp ESC is running on the AM32 firmware. So I was interested to check it out and see what sort of differences that brings to the table and how it compares to the Fury Tech. Let's go over some of the specs on the ESCs really quickly. The FuryTech Lizard Pro ESC is a 3S capable brushed and brushless ESC. You can see it has the optional Bluetooth adapter connected to it and that allows you to interface it with FuryTech's smartphone app to make adjustments really, really easy. It has a built-in BEC that is adjustable via the app between 5 and 6.5 volts. The Dinky RC D-Drive Microsport ESC is also really impressively specced. This is a 2 to 4S capable ESC and that 4S capability is going to be really handy if you're running it in a crawler with a ton of gear reduction, you want that wheel speed or if you want to do a rock bouncer build or similar where wheel speed is absolutely important then that's going to be a really really handy feature for you. The built-in BEC is a 2.5 amp unit and when ordering this from Dinky RC's website, you can specify whether you want the BEC output to be between 5 and 8.4 volts. However, once they've set it up for you, um, whilst getting your order ready, you can't change it after that. So that's going to be really important uh, to make sure you have it set up correctly for the servos that you intend to run. This is a brushed and brushless capable ESC and adjustments are made via an AM32 programmer uh, that you can purchase from Dinky RC's website. The only adjustment I've made to this ESC out of the package is I've just bumped up the low voltage cutoff from 3.3 volts up to 3.5 volts. When ordering this ESC, uh, you can tell Dinky RC what you intend to run it in. You can tell them the motor that you're going to use, uh, the KV and pole count and whether you're running it in a crawler or whatever and they will pre-configure this unit so that straight out of the package you can plug it in with your intended motor and it'll run super crazy smooth right out of the box without having to make any adjustments. The pricing on these units is fairly competitive with the Dinky RC actually coming in a little bit cheaper. The Lizard Pro with the Bluetooth, and if you don't already have a Bluetooth module, you're definitely going to want to get that, is about 80 bucks. The Dinky RC can be picked up ESC only for $47.50, and if you want to add the AM32 programmer, Dinky RC will sell you one of those for $12.50. So 60 bucks with the programmer is a really, really good price. Uh, given the versatility and the specs on that ESC. In this video, I decided not to go in depth and show you how to make adjustments to both of these ESCs. There's plenty of information on YouTube about how to make adjustments via the FuryTech app. Super easy and convenient with the FuryTech. There's also plenty of information on how to make adjustments to AM32 powered uh, ESCs. But if you guys are interested in a video, um, diving a little bit deeper into connecting this to a PC and making configuration changes. Drop a comment down below and I'll be able to make that video for you. I'm going to get each ESC mounted into the Bronco. We're going to take it out on the backyard rock course. We're going to do the same 
course run with each ESC and see if we can spot any differences between the two ESCs. This section of course here is fairly new. Some of these rocks are pretty loose, um, which made the run up this hill here a little bit treacherous. So we'll just battle our way through. And you will see um, at the top of the climb, uh, as we're cresting that larger rock, the there's a small pause or hesitation um, as the FuryTech ESC is stepping out of that uh, FOC range and stepping up into conventional brushless operation and the my trigger finger lands right on that transition point and there's a little bit of a pause and a little bit of a stutter and I've got to remember to keep pulling that trigger um, so the truck continues on through that range you can see it did it again as I'm stepping back down into FOC there was that little bit of a pause there um, it's not really a huge deal if you just pull the, tr the throttle trigger smoothly through that range the truck continues on without issue uh, it doesn't really cause the truck to roll backwards or anything like that but for me it, it does affect the precision um, of that throttle feel so that's something to keep in mind with the Fury Tech. To an extent that can be tuned out but it's kind of always there uh, in a way. You can see as I'm stepping back down into the FOC range to descend this hill there's a little bit of a pause, a uh, small bit of a, a shutter again um, as it steps through that range. But obviously there's plenty of um, low speed control you can see on that descent very nicely controlled um, really nice bit of wheel speed on 2S as well. Uh, for the most part these two ESCs uh, feel very similar in operation um, the only difference being that with the the dinky you don't get that um, that little pause or stutter uh, between the FOC and the conventional brushless it just kind of continues on unfazed um, with a very smooth throttle response throughout. I kind of messed this line up a little bit and you can see the truck is nearly completely on its side there and if I had it continued on we would have toppled back down that hill so just have to correct the line which is easy with that really nice low speed control you can be very precise with positioning the vehicle again right there a little bit of a stutter we had to power through it with the throttle and then we're underway again and that's about it for the fury tech lizard pro run great little esc um just that little hiccup um coming up from the coming out of the FOC range uh, into brushless operation always seems to be right in the wrong spot on the trigger right when I'm trying to ease the truck through something it seems to land uh, right in that range So I sort of attacked this climb a little bit differently with the Dinky RC Micro Sport ESC. I was worried all those rocks were going to shift out again so I kind of just charged my way up there uh, which worked well. You can see we've got nice smooth control still. And as we drop down uh, onto this little log bridge we'll slow things down. You can see that we've got really nice slow speed control and that transition uh, into and out of the uh, vector control or FOC uh, portion of the throttle is extremely smooth uh, without a perceivable um, transition at all. Uh, it just whatever you ask for at the trigger is what you get at the truck. Uh, for me I just really enjoy um, the throttle feel and how um, smooth and easy it is to drive the truck. The Fury Tech's pretty similar. I just kind of have to be mindful of where the throttle trigger is so I don't land uh, right on that transition um, out of FOC into regular brushless operation. You can see here the dinkies 
uh, showing off its glacially slow crawl. We've got plenty of control, uh, which is probably one of the biggest benefits to me of the brushless systems, is that level of control that you get um, when descending with the truck. It's very hard to get that level of uh, downhill control um, out of a brushed setup. So this run goes a little bit smoother. Um, I probably had a little bit of practice on that previous run, so we hit the lines a little bit cleaner and take a little bit less time going through the course. Uh, but I think you can see there's no issue um, with slow speed control on this setup. Uh, the Dinky RC uh, is a very, very nice ESC. I do kind of miss um, the convenience of being able to make adjustments uh, via the app like you can with the Fury Tech. Uh, but I think the trade-offs are worth it with this being a 4S capable ESC and having that really nice uh, linear throttle response. I think that makes this an extremely good value uh, given the competitive price point. Um, I think this is definitely a worthy contender. Running both of these ESCs back to back on the rock course was actually pretty interesting. Given that our truck set up, the motor and battery remained identical uh, between each run. We're really just isolating how each ESC runs the motor and what its throttle feel is like. Now, I need to note that this is a 2800 kV outrunner. It has pretty decent wheel speed on 2S. The truck is running the low range gears in the transmission. So this is kind of a best case scenario. You definitely want to have that a nice deep gear reduction. Really gives that motor a chance to have some RPM and that helps it to run as smoothly as possible. I think if you were to run both of these ESCs blind, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between the two, to be honest. They both have that signature glacially slow crawl that's expected from a brushless system. Even the sound that's emitted by the motor is fairly similar between the two. They do have differences. You can distinguish those differences while you're driving the vehicle, but it is pretty subtle. So the first thing I noticed with the Dinky RC speed control mounted in the truck is just how smooth and linear the throttle feel was straight out of the package. There's no perceivable jump out of the vector or FOC end of the throttle into the conventional brushless mode. It was just completely seamless. Um, that transition is just non-existent, uh, at least in this setup anyway. Your mileage might vary depending on the motor and gearing reduction in your truck but for this setup the speed control just felt perfect at the throttle trigger straight out of the box. When I first installed the FuryTech Lizard Pro in this setup I was getting a little bit of a stutter or hesitation uh, right where the FOC range stepped up into conventional brushless operation. I was able to iron that out before doing the course run on the video by changing the firmware version in the app to the latest version. I made some changes to the throttle curve, to the FOC power, and to the low speed ranges, and I was pretty much able to iron that out for the most part. If you operate the throttle uh, right on that transition, the truck still does um, hesitate and sort of buck a tiny little bit, but it's pretty subtle. Um, and if you drive right through it, it's pretty much um, not noticeable. Both of these speed controls are a fantastic option. I think pricing and availability in your particular location um, is probably going to be one of the deciding factors on which one you purchase. For me, the Dinky RC speed control slightly edges out the Fury Tech uh, in terms of cost. Once you've made that initial purchase of $12.50 for the AM32 programmer, these little guys are only $47.50 each. I think for a 4S capable speed control with a 2.5 amp BEC built in, uh, that's just an incredible price point. And that throttle, that smooth linear throttle feel that you get from the AM32 firmware, um, I think makes this a really, really excellent value. The FuryTech 
Speed control is also a great option. They're available everywhere. Most hobby stores are probably going to have these guys on the shelf. They're super popular for a reason because that experience of being able to make the adjustments through the app uh, makes them super versatile and convenient. For me with the Fury Tech, you've got to sometimes, when you change to a different motor, you've sometimes got to change the firmware version to get it to run smoothly. Uh, with the Dinky, you can go into the um, configuration app on your PC and you can tell it the KV and the pole count. So this thing knows exactly what motor it's running. With the Fury Tech, it gives you motor profiles only for Fury Tech's motors themselves. So every time they come out with a new motor, the Cedar and Venom have been added. They're the newest ones, they've been added to the app. Uh, but you can't tell this speed control that you're running a Holmes Hobbies Revolver 280. You can only tell it, you have to sort of approximate the profile. Um, I'm running this one on the Micro Komodo profile for this Holmes Hobbies uh, motor, and that seems to be working fairly well. But I do like that you can tell the AM32 firmware exactly what pole count and KV you're running, so it knows how best to run that motor. So that's something uh, unique about the AM32. And that's something to keep in mind with the Fury Tech is sometimes when you add a different motor to get it to play nicely and run smoothly, you might have to change the firmware version and mess about with the settings a little bit to get it to run well. Once it's dialed in, it's a very similar driving experience. Um, it has a really nice throttle response, uh, but for me, the Dinky RC just edges it out in terms of value. That's where we're going to wrap things up. For today's brushless ESC comparison. If you guys got any value out of today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. If I left something out, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.